Baxter, let's keep moving. It is the Bulldogs up first. And, okay, they didn't play good a couple of weeks ago. They got smashed by Newcastle. They stepped up last week and they were able to upset a New South Wales Cup side, cool, whatever you want to call it. They upset South Sydney. They got the job done. You got Jake Averillo. You got Blake Wilson coming fresh off a hat trick. You got Braden Burns, Jacob Perez, Josh Adokar. However, he did come off with an injury in origin. So we'll see if he does play this game. We'll know a bit more tomorrow at kickoff of the first game. We've got Matt Burden, Toby Sexton, Max Keane, Reid Mahoney, Raymond Mariner, Jackson Toppany, Jacob Preston, Corey Riddell, Mr. Kyle Flanagan slips into the number 14 jersey. We've caught Curtis Morin, Tavita Penguai Jr., Jaden Ockenbaugh, Fa'amanu Brown, Jarrell Skelton, Reese Hoffman, Paul Alamotti, and Chris Patolo. Now, mm-hmm. two things I want to touch on, obviously. What do you think of this squad? Because I think it on paper, and we've spoke about this, we're actually together after the game that happened last weekend, and we were both in agreement that Toby Sexton came into this squad last week. <laughs> And he changed everything. Without him, they still lose that. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I yell it out already? Can I say Toby Sexton, the signing of the year? Um, right. To go from a 66, 66 deficit uh, in one week, you sign Toby Sexton, he comes into the squad and you win a game uh, You win a game against whatever you want to call it, a New South Wales Cup side, but signing of the season? Come on, the big biggest turnaround? Come on. Well, I think, on. I'm, I think I'm now going to have to put the... Uh, <laughs> The Belmore Sports Ground going for 10 shows. I think we just got 90% of our viewership from Belmore. But, I mean, hey, if you want to take a week and see how he goes, we'll see how he goes this week. But definitely he did make a huge difference to this side. And you know what? I get it. I get it. People come in and go, oh, but we had eight players out for Souths. And you know what? I totally agree. But let's be honest. Most of this guys probably should be playing in New South Wales Cup. So it's probably an even game. But my main talking points. Talk to me about Toby Sexton. Talk to me about obviously Blake Wilson's hat trick last week, and then the man, the the man, the grub. He's an absolute grub, Mister Reynolds. He gave up his spot for sex, and he is retiring. He will be playing his final game in New South Wales Cup this weekend. So, just talk to me a bit about him as well. Yeah, look, Sexton. Um, I've always rated him while I was at Gold Coast. Um, he was playing in the halves there for a while. Um, I think he was playing six, a little bit of seven with Tanner Boyd, obviously. Kieran Foran coming into the scene. Obviously, he's going to cement the squad number uh, number six. So um, I think Toby, uh, I think he got a little bit of a pec injury or a little bit of a, uh, a, le- a hamstring injury. So he was silent for a couple of weeks and they went with Tanner Boyd and he's been killing it ever since. So don't rock the boat while it's still uh, going downstream nice and fastly for the Gold Coast Titans. So unfortunately, Toby has to move on. Um, good pickup. Uh, Josh, unlucky to wrap up his career earlier than what I would have deemed to be him finishing up. But um, you can see by his um, exit media um, report that, you know, how much it means, uh, the Bulldog, uh, Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs means to him. Um, every time he's worn that jersey, he's he's got that Steve Mortimer aura about him with the Canterbury Bulldogs. I don't, I don't remember a time where, any any of the fans would have carried off another Bulldogs player other than Josh and Steve Mortimer. Um, so just ha- hats off to Josh. Um, I'll, I'll try and make my way down there on Saturday at Belmore to watch him play New South Wales Cup. If I don't, I'll be watching it on the TV. If not, I'll find a way to watch it. Um, but other than that, yeah, good. There's not much... There's not much Really negative, a great bounce back against South, but you can only play what's in front of you. So, um, good win last week uh, after that deficit against Newcastle. But, um, yeah, good to see Kyle Fonny come back in the interchange events at 14. That's all I can, oh, that's all I can say. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Now, the only thing I want to bring up is obviously Oloa Arpu. What's his name? That, that, that young kid that they signed, I think it was 500 grand, I had to pay to get him out. Um, he had one game at center and now they've dropped him. Oh, it was one game at half, so now they've dropped him. So, it's a bit questionable. You've got Matt Burden. You've got Toby Sexton. You've got Kyle Flanagan. You're now looking at getting someone from the Dragons. Like, There's just a lot of halves option at this team, and I don't know if they're spending the money in the right direction. We've got Phil Gould in the media on Twitter saying, we don't want Tino, and then there's pictures of him talking to Tino. We don't want this player. 
Nah, was it was it was it him with to- Tony Atina? Was it him? Was him and Blake Taff? I know that for sure. No, no, so he was with Blake Taff, but there was a um, meeting scheduled for Tino with his manager. That yes, that was supposed to. Someone had a picture of it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that meet uh, that meeting has taken place as this is recorded on Thursday, the night no- the night after um, Origin. But oh, I I loved if anybody watched one hundred percent footy on. Nine when Gus blew up about that whole Tino contract thing for just just a re- report. So Buzz Ruffield, Daily Telegraph, um, writer, editor, whatever you want to call him, journalist, came out and in, in his own his, in his own column and said that he had spoken to Peter Val- uh, not Peter Valendez, uh, Laundy, Peter Laund- uh, Laundy, Laundy, Peter, ah uh, Tino, was it? No, uh, Laundy. Talking about Landy's? Nah, Laundy, the the sponsor jersey. Oh, yeah, yep. But so he's talking to Laundy. He had he actually had a conversation with him between Buzz and Laundy. The conversation lasted about twenty five, maybe half an hour. Laundy rang him back, wanted to edit some of his comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From his report, from his talk from Laundy, then about how he wanted to introduce the shares of the pub and whatnot. Um, he went down that path, checked it all out, went back. Really what started this off was he he went sniffing around and the two Sydney clubs that were interested in Tino office um, um, both agreed that they um, there was a bigger higher offer from the Dogs, so they pulled out. So Dogs was the only, only team. So really this is all a big of a... Really, really, what it really comes down to is um, Laundy wants to uh, give him a share or whoever signs a share at a pub. You put up some money to buy in, and if it, if it does go bust, Laundy wanted to give you that money back. And that's not how it works in the NRL. So um, basically, if, basically, if you put into a share and it goes bust, you lose that money. That's how um, the world works. So uh, I think that's where the NRL had to step in and sort of iron out a few um, wrinkles in that contract. But for Gus to come out and say it's all big, um, it's the media against him, everybody's against the dogs, no one's against him. <laughs> Everybody can stand back and let them self-capitulate in their own little world. Uh, Gus, is do- as, I, as I said about the Tiger, when we previously touched on the Tigers, Gus is doing a great job when it comes to the, you know, the 66 nil, and he came out and, stood up for Cameron Serrato and said he didn't want him to come this year, he wanted him to come next year. He's he's in for the fight. He wants to get the his hands dirty early on and that's what you want from a GM. But mate, when there's when there's truths in the matter about you meeting with players or you are going to meet with players as a representative of the Canary Bulldogs, just own it. There's no point hiding it. You know, you, you could say, oh, I wasn't made aware of a meeting going to take place, but he he was of interest or anything because, like, the club's come out and uh, there was interest from the club from Tino's manager. So Tino's manager ain't, ain't lying. Just own it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a basket case, but like you said, he is doing a good job of keeping that away from, I guess, the hate that Serrato is copying from some people. I've heard fans come out and say, oh, I never wanted him. I hope he goes. And then Gus Gill comes out and goes, oh, you know what? It's probably a bit more my fault. I didn't want him. And they kind of back out. So you are right in the fact that he is helping Serrato, but it has been a few years now. So I don't see this turning out Penrith-like, but hopefully they can flip a switch and eventually get back to the glory days, especially for their fans that have stuck around. But Baxter, I'll throw it to you. They do have a tough, tough opponent this weekend. Talk to me about the squad. Yeah, look, Tristan Saylor, last game filling in for Reese Walsh at fullback. Corey Oates, Tony Stagg, Herbie Farmworth, Selwyn Cobbo, Ezra Man, Adam Reynolds to round out the back seven. Uh, Keenan, Billy Walters, Corey Jensen, Kurt Capewell, Brendan Pictura, Toby Harrington to round out the front row, uh, the, or say the front, uh, the front row positions. Tyson Smoothie, Xavier Wilson, Jesse Arthurs, Martin Powell, um, to make the interchange bench, Din Mariner, Pat Carrigan, Jock Madden, to round out the 18th and 19th, and 20th, 
Luis Horta and jo uh, Jordan Pereira to make the interchange band. I don't see um, Pat Carrigan making a return uh, this week um, after Origin. Not because of that. I think it's just more giving him a rest. Um, they do have a buy up their sleeve, which I don't know off the top of my head who when they've got that buy. Uh, but nonetheless, um, they do again. They do play the sec uh, third last place um, Canterbury Banks and Bulldogs. So hopefully they can get the win here. This is a team quite the opposite to most other clubs. They're, they're a club that have turned a rebuilding year around really, really quickly into a team now humming. The front office is all humming on the same page, on the same train, on the same line, heading in the right direction. And then the news broke, uh, broke today of big Payne Haas testing himself in the open market. Now, look, his excuse was he wants to win a comp, but this is – but the Brisbane Broncos, this is their window of winning a comp this year. Like, if, if you're talking about window of opportunities, this is the biggest window of opportunity to win a, a grand final with the Brisbane Broncos is this year, and you want to move? Oh, look, I, I, I'd say good luck. See ya. Don't let, uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out because – you know, he's had management that got him the big upgrade. Then he got rid of that management and got new management in. Then the new management was unhappy that, you know, the old management was getting some of his, uh, some of his uh, the management fee from the last contract. So they wanted that million-dollar upgrade. He wanted to be that million-dollar player. And I think we've touched on it previously this year about is he deserve it? Stats say, yeah, he is a million-dollar player, but to keep a team and a squad together that's um, that can keep all these good players together. You've got to take unders. You see it. At the, you see it at the Roosters. You see it at Penrith. Um, you see it at other uh, uh, Melbourne Storm players take less to keep a squad together so they can win comps. That's the simpler fact. So if you want to get a player who's on a million dollars, or well, they're going to be playing for the Wooden Spoon like the West Tigers, Dogs, Dragons, um, anybody else down there um, right now. So. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I was getting a bit nervous then as you're listing names because you're getting closer and closer to my team on the ladder. So I was getting well, a little look, bit nervous. No, nah, well, look, you, we'll touch you on it later, but I think you're just a, a, a year of unluckiness. I'll, I'll put it down there. You, you had this one, you know, many, many, many years ago with the whole um, uh, Mitchell Pierce and dog um, scandal, you know. Weren't, weren't expecting him to miss him out for the cup, uh, for the first uh, how many weeks it was of the comp. You had a bad year that year, but then you bounced back and uh, I think you won the comp in 2013, which I was there at that grand final. So nonetheless, I put it down to a year of unluckiness. But this year, like back to the Brisbane Broncos, Payne Haas... What do you do? What do, you, do you keep or sell him? Do you keep or, do you keep or sell him? Well, you got to find the right price. It depends how much he's asking for. I think if he's asking for a hundred grand a year, you probably keep him if you can keep him in your salary cup because he is arguably the best player in his position at NRL level. Now, Origin, he goes a bit missing, but at NRL level, I think he's an asset to any team. But you've also got to look at, okay, let's talk hypothetical right now. Adam Reynolds, how long does he have left? Maybe a year, maybe two years if he signs on an extension. You then got to go. If we let Payne Hass go, do we have the players where we can go and spend a million well, dollars and a half? Can we go and get, I don't know, Jerome Luai, for example? Can we put him in the number six? Like, can, like you know what I mean? Like, do we need to strengthen our squad anywhere else? Does well, Reese Walsh now this, go? This I squad. Need a new oh, sorry. This squad. Like, looking for it, at, on this paper, on the on the screen, this squad, this this pack looks impressive without Payne Hass in there. And that's without Pat Carrigan as well. So my opinion is, from what news reports that I'm hearing, is he's looking for that million dollar. He's he's gone to other clubs like the Dogs, like the Dragons, like the Titans, who have the money in their salary cap to pay for that million dollars. And from my understanding is that his management will go back to the Brisbane and go, well, look, these are the offers. Can you match it? I say get rid of him because... What's he on now? Eight fifty, nine hundred. 
you, so you're going to get 900 next year. Then you, you, also, you also lose Herbie Farmworth, who's going to the Dolphins, who signed, I think, in round two or even off, even preseason um, of this year. So you lose him. So really, you could go out there and start looking for a quality, um, a quality center replacement. Now, you might have to spend five, six hundred thousand of that, you know, whatever Herbie plus um, Payne's contract as well, and then just have that money sitting in the bank, waiting, waiting, and then when this, when you need to replace an Adam Reynolds, another and to, get, to go out and find another seven. Maybe bring a junior in. Maybe you bring in an experienced half in. There's the money sitting aside, waiting in the wind for a rainy day. That's what you. That's what good clubs do. And this is where I think the Brisbane Broncos are a good club financially, and they've got the stability to move forward like this. And that's my opinion. I'd say get rid of him. It's not because he's a New South Welshman. It's just a seriously about the money issue. Just. Look, as you said, if you could get him on a hundred thousand dollars a year, um, I think the minimum's one fifty. But if even if you could get him on the minimum, being an Origin uh, rep player, um, I'd take it. I'd take him in a heartbeat. But a million dollars, as I've always said, you got to take unders to win comps. Well, same when you said there's a million dollar player on the market. Let me just put on the sombrero for a second. And, uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can. Uh, up. It's popped up. <laughs> we'll see if. Um, if Nick Polias wants to lose a few games of golf and see if we can get him in that pretty Bondi jersey. But Baxter, I'll throw it back to you. Um, obviously, looking at it on a perspective of second versus 15th, you automatically go 13 plus. But do keep in mind this game is getting played at Belmore. It is after Reynolds. So it will be a massive crowd. It's going to be a crazy day. What's your prediction for this game? I've gone again, 1 to 12, I've thought. Um, being at Belmore, you, there's. <laughs> Really, you only have to beat them by a point, and you, you got the two points. You don't have to. You can you can win ugly and still walk away with the two points, which is I don't think they will do. I think they'll do enough out there to secure the win without going um, all guns blazing to get those two points. This isn't the game. As you as we as I scroll down quickly with the Brisbane Broncos this season uh, for the for their run home to the end of the season. They got the dogs this week. Then they got Sunshine Coast against South Sydney Rabbitohs, being the away team. Then they got then they got the Gabbo against you guys. Then against my Cowboys away up at Townsville. Then they're at the Gabbo again against the Eels. Then then they travel down to Canberra in Canberra, and then they finish at home at Suncorp against the Melbourne Storm. So this is the game where I would be just chilling in second gear because. Next week you got Seas with Cody Walker coming off a great Origin game. Then you got to bounce back against your guys, Roosters, who will definitely put up a fight. Hopefully they do. And then our boys um, being the away team as well uh, for the Brisbane Broncos, um, who are making a trying a run home for the top eight. So yeah, win win ugly, get the two points, rest up Paddy Carrigan. Yeah. yeah. I- I've I've got to I've got to agree with you here. Now I was leaning towards a thirteen plus, but you make a good point. There is no Paddy Carrigan. That's one massive out. There is no Payne House. That's another massive out. There is no Reese Walsh. It's another massive out. And you chuck on the occasion of Belmore is going to be fucking rocking from the start of the day, leading into New South Wales Cup, leading into this game. It's a three p.m. on the Saturday. It's going to be absolutely rocking. So I'm going to say one to twelve. I think it'll get ugly, but I think that the Broncos have enough talent still in his squad to get across the line. But Baxter, uh, 